Hey, oh, and welcome back to part two of the Wicked Pixelated podcast. I'm still Lanudis. I'm still with Mike, and we're still recording. Uh, talking about our top five movies of the year, as well as our disappointments and predictions into 2018. Uh, like us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash Wicked Pixelated. Go ahead and subscribe on YouTube where we upload this in an audio format. Follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, and on SoundCloud, and on Craigslist, and on MySpace. Wicked Pixelated, all that jazz. Enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome to part two of this maybe two-part episode <laughs> of Wicked Pixelated. We are just going to keep recording. Yeah, so that was our games. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let's talk about our movies now. Do you want to keep it as in-depth as we were with that first list, or do you want to power through these? Because I wouldn't mind being in-depth with these however you want to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had a lot of fun going in depth, and I, I, I think I'll definitely have fun going in depth with movies as well. We're, I think we're on a roll here. Boom. All right, then. Let's let's fucking do it. Uh, let's do this. Go big or go home. All right. You go first, man. Number five. All right. Number five for me is that Stephen King classic horror story, It. Damn, I missed that this year. Oh really? Oh dude, it, yeah. It was fucking great. It, it it was a great movie. Um yeah, uh the way that uh I like to describe it, a coworker of mine described it as being like stand by me, only instead of trying to find a dead body, these kids are unfortunately being terrorized by a demon clown. Stand by me with a dead body. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yes, I. Yeah. The only reason I didn't get to seeing it is because I wanted to see it in theaters, and once it was out of theaters, I'm like, ah, well, shit. But I did see the original for the first time to kind of get hyped for it. Had no idea it was like a two part movie where it took like oh. one half of the movie was the 80s and the other half of the movie was them older or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the uh, if, yeah, it was originally a, a, a made for TV uh, miniseries, I think. So obviously, since that one was made for TV, um, uh, they 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 could they could only show so much. In in this new version, they oh man, <laughs> the blood and gore and oh my god, yeah, it's 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 intense, man. Uh, I I I think I pooped myself twice while watching it. <laughs> only twice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely get around to it. As far as horror movie goes, would you say that's probably like the best horror movie you saw this year? Not to spoil anything else that might show up later on the list. Yeah, for for sure, yeah, because I mean, like I said, uh it's it's kind of like Stand by Me. Um it it yes, it is a, a very scary uh movie, I guess. Uh well, actually it is, I'm not going to say it, I guess. <laughs> um <laughs> it, it it mixes this it strikes this this really cool balance of horror with uh, a heartwarming uh, coming of age story, which um, you know I I just I love when when movies sort of have that kind of juxtaposition going on. Mm. Now, again, a, I guess a better question for me to ask is not just the best movie horror movie you saw that year, but is it one of the better horror movies you've seen in a while? Like, if you were to rank like five scary movies, would this automatically be up there now? Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, it 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 has um like I said, yeah, it's got all the the uh, qualities that you would want in a horror movie. Uh, there's a a great villain in Pennywise. Uh, what's his name? Bill Skarsgård, I think. He he just knocks it out of the park. Um, the the kids are all fantastic. Um, is that kid from Stranger Things in it, or just the kid that looks like the kid from Stranger Things? No, oh, no, that that is him. Yeah, Finn Wolfhard, I think. Yeah, he uh. Dude, he, he swears a lot in this movie. It's 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 hilarious. I feel like Just if I saw that, it would ruin terrible. Stranger Things for me. <laughs> like, no, you're yeah, that's, a, that's another thing I forgot, I forgot to mention too. This movie it it also has like a, a lot of humor in it. 
I, I think it, it perfectly balances out the uh, like if like it, it never strays too far into the the scariness realm because uh, you know the, then like some kid will like make like a like a dick joke or something <laughs> and, and, um, and and then uh, you know they'll they'll have to uh, they'll, they'll they'll end up bonding over something like it it it, it knows how to pace itself very well. All right, that's cool. Definitely sets, yeah. it sets up a sequel, too, right? Like, they're going to do the same thing where the first movie is them as kids and the next one is them older? Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. There there, there may be some foreshadowing when somebody... I don't, don't want to spoil anything, yeah. but yeah, there, there is some foreshadowing that that it will return. It will return. Next bum, bum, bum. time Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, right in the fields. All right, uh, shit. Sorry, I'm like fucking around with this thing. It's bugging me. Um, my number five. I'm sure this movie's probably gonna show up uh, higher on your list. So feel free mm-hmm. to chime in with your opinions on it. Mm-hmm. My fucking John Wick two. Oh shit. Oh shit. Is it not on your list. You. I feel so bad now. Oh, it's all good. That means we're just gonna talk about more movies. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Fucking John Wick 2, man. Talk about a sequel done right. Oh my god. Like, there's so much more... John Wick had no right to be good. It was just kind of like a... When I first saw the trailer, I was like, that looks like a generic action movie. Cool uh, shots and stuff, so I was interested enough in it. And I was like, alright. And then sure enough, the story is just like, dude gets his dog killed, and he just kills everyone. I'm like, relatable. I would do the same. Yeah, you you can just easily relate to him, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but man, if somebody killed my dog. You bet your ass I'll go fucking John Wick on them. That, and not only that, Keanu Reeves. Like, have you seen that video of him, uh, like training? Like he did that whole uh, course, like military yeah, style, just like shot. target. That was fucking nuts. That was that was crazy. He's like what? He's fifty years old, and he's like fucking doing all his own stunts and like training and shooting guns and shit. Like that's that's just mind blowing. And most importantly, he's not fucking out there molesting in Hollywood like everyone else. So he's also a cool <laughs> exactly. guy. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> See, there is a shining light of hope out there in Hollywood, and it's inside of Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. So John Wick too, man. That that world building was so much better this time around because we understood the character and everything from the first movie that now we got to see the society and like those hobos all being like not really hobos (laughs) 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 just like carrier pigeons kind of shit like oh (sighs) yeah that was a cool movie man what 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 about you what do you remember of it Oh man, dude, the the fucking the fight scene between him and Common when they're just like shooting each other over like the <laughs> like the the water fountains, just like pew pew, and then just like walk pew pew, like taking pop shots. I love that scene. <laughs> um, oh man, the the scene when they're they're at the uh, the Colosseum, and then there's like in Rome, and there's that concert going on, and oh, uh, they're just like fucking shooting people, and and like the whole crowd thinks it's part of the show, and they're like yeah, I'm like oh my god. Just brilliant choreography there. And once again, storytelling. Because it sets up that world and it sets up the third one perfectly. Oh, with, my like, God. Matthews yeah, he's officially has a target on his back. And then everyone's phone is going off and they all start looking at him. He just slowly starts running. And it's just like, get ready for John Wick 3, motherfuckers. It's going to be so great. Oh, my God. He's, he's literally going to have nowhere to hide in the next one. And it'll just be really interesting, interesting to see where the fuck he does. Yeah, so that, oh my that's God. my number two, man. Uh, let's go on to number four. What do you got? My number four, well, shit, since I, f- I forgot that John Wick uh, came out last year, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up, uh, I, I put down Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Ooh, very good one. Very good one. Yeah, I mean, what I really loved about this movie is it, it uh, it, it it expanded on these characters that we we meet in the first movie in substantial ways I think, um yeah in the first one like we're all like oh yeah it's funny whatever the, um all these characters are really funny but here uh we see some vulnerabilities in in uh not only not only Peter Quill but in in uh Rocket and Yondu as well and I I just loved and and even Gamora like literally every character in this movie is fleshed out and. I think seen as a whole three-dimensional character as opposed to just a, a two-dimensional joke. Like, well, I mean, I don't want to go as far as say a two-dimensional joke, but... 
they're, they're more fleshed out in this one. And I, I really love the, uh, the father son message in this movie. Cause not to sound sa- sappy or anything, but I, I have a, you know, I have a really great r- relationship with my father and, just really, this this movie made me think a lot about that and how much I I really appreciate and don't want to take that for granted. See, I fucking cried like a bitch during this movie. <laughs> oh, I did too. Like near the end, I was bawling, man. I was crying I, towards the end, but almost for like the opposite reason. <laughs> oh, oh no! I'm so sorry. Just because I'm, I'm so like, sorry. you know, my dad's kind of a dick, so I'm like watching this movie and I'm like, I have daddy issues too. He's like, he might be your father, but he's not your daddy. And I'm like, that's so true. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> no, don't be, man. I'm like kidding to some extent. I love my dad to and some everything. He... <laughs> <laughs> I love my dad. He pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, I, I don't know. I, I do have a relationship with my father uh, that I can kind of relate to that movie in a different sense that I haven't with a Marvel movie before. And for it to be from one of the probably funniest Marvel movie to come out while also crying is kind of like a pretty awesome feat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, shit. The op. My thing is, and again, it's setting up the future stuff, but I love the, the that we're gonna see a teen Groot. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> you had like the the freaking voice changing shit and everything, being all angsty. Like, I, yeah, I really love how we're seeing these different, like, versions of Groot. It's almost like backwards evolution from Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we already saw adult as... Groot, now we're seeing teen Groot. Yeah, he started off all big and strong and, you know, kind of goofy. Uh, and then in, in uh, this one, he's just really small and just incredibly dumb. <laughs> and now he's going to be super angsty. Like, his, his backwards character arc is very funny and uh, compelling, I guess. And uh, even Batista's character with uh, that weird alien chick, that was an interesting relationship that was forming there. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was almost like a, a love-hate-ish, kind of. Mm-hmm. And Egon, the living planet, like, that's a weird, that's a cool villain to have for that movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure, like yeah. Ma- molded into a person, like a tangible being as opposed to an actual planet but still having the same yeah. concept from the comic book, so it's like, oh shit, you actually translated that for movies. And he's so, like, I just want everything to be me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the best. Sh- should have known that from his name, Ego. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna move on to my number four now, which, ironically enough, is also a Marvel movie. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, Logan. Oh, shit. Yeah. I totally forgot that came out in 2017 as well. Yeah, man, I had to pull up a calendar of all the movies that came out, because I'm like, let me just make sure I don't forget shit. And uh, <laughs> a lot a lot of the stuff was earlier this year, really. Like, a lot of the stuff later in the year kind of hit or miss with me. It's honestly more mm-hmm. in my honorable mentions than anything else. But the mm. beginning of this year was really strong, man. And Logan just wrapped up... If that's Hugh Jack, if that really is Hugh Jackman's last appearance as Wolverine... I'll allow it. That was cool. Yeah, it, that that was a, a perfect way for him to go, I think. And people want to shit on it to some extent because it's like, oh, it didn't adapt the old man Logan story how it should have been. They're supposed to be mutant Hulk inbred kids and all this shit. It's like, fair enough, but like, as a grounded story that's not like anything that the Marvel movies have done before, this was fucking awesome. Just yeah. So fucking good. Uh, Absolutely. First, well, not first, but uh, an R-rated Logan. We got to see him real bloody and beaten. <laughs> like, <laughs> actually killing people and not, like, knocking them out or anything. Just straight up murdering them. Yeah, and Xavier was there, and you got some cool callbacks, and it, t- it just tied things together in a really interesting way. Even if it doesn't make sense with X-Men timeline, Days of Future Past, and all this I nonsense. Mean, it- the, the X-Men timeline was, like, fucked up even before this movie, so, like, I exactly. feel like that's, like... So just take yeah. this movie as is, like, I'm not even gonna, like, like well, technically it comes after, like, no, it's just, fucking shit happened, that's it. <laughs> shit happened, and then there's Logan. <laughs> exactly, yeah, if, if the studio, like, doesn't even care at this point, then neither should we. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, yeah, if you, ha- if you don't have anything to add to that, do you? 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I think you, you really uh, hit everything. Uh, oh, yeah, one thing I really love about Logan, uh, they, they actually have X-Men comic books in that universe, which I thought was like a really cool mm. uh, kind of like meta kind of thing going on. Uh, completely unrelated to Logan. Well, I mean, it is related, but it's outside of the movie universe, is the fact that they were pretty dead set on bringing in uh, X-23. I think that was her name, right? The girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yep. I'm pretty sure they would have gone ahead and made her Wolverine like she is in the comics. They would have given her her own solo movie, continued on in this universe. And now that Disney bought Marvel, it's kind of crazy that we might not ever see that. And we might not ever get a movie akin to Logan, because I feel like eventually they're going to introduce X-Men into this whole Avengers and big one universe thing. But there was something interesting about having the X-Men be its own thing away from Marvel that now that it's not, it kind of sucks for that. Cause I yeah, know. because now they're probably going to uh, tie it into like, oh, Tony Stark met these people. And, you know, yeah, like, and it'll be like, cool, I, I but it just that. won't be the same. Yeah, because Some, I mean, like, lost I, in there. the movies weren't perfect, but they were different. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so that was your... What's your number three? The bronze. My number three? Number three, the bronze. I'm going to have to go with yet another Marvel movie. This time I'm going with Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> nice. Very oh, good. my God, yeah. This movie, like, what I really loved about this movie was I, I wasn't really, like, a huge Thor fan before this one. Because, I don't know, like, I, I felt like he didn't really... Uh, stand out as a very interesting character before but now like this movie like it just it, it just goes like balls to the wall with the humor like <laughs> i think it, it might even be like up there with with guardians of the galaxy and uh it just has this very unique feel to it with uh uh it, it's it's sort of fusing like the the thor universe with that side that uh that weird marvel space shit side of marvel mm -hmm. which I, I thought was really cool with the gladiators and the fighting hulk and like the fucking starting up the revolution and <laughs> like it, it juggled like a lot of different aspects, but it, hand, it handled them very well and balanced itself out perfectly. It's it's the closest thing we'll ever get to a proper Planet Hulk movie. Oh, which, I yeah. thought, which I thought was interesting because they basically said when I was reading the previews for it, like before trailers and everything, and they described this movie as kind of like a, a buddy cop <laughs> movie <laughs> with like Hulk and <laughs> Thor. And I'm like, all right, that sounds cool. And they fucking pulled it off. I, didn't, did. I, didn't, I thought it would just kind of flop because Thor has never been... Of all the movies, Thor is always at the bottom of the food chain. Not that they're bad, they're just not good, you know? Yeah. Like, I'd watch them and just be like, okay, that was fine. And then this one is just like leaps and bounds better than like some of the other Marvel movies now. Iron Man 2, Absolutely. get out of here. I <laughs> mean. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> but yeah i liked it a lot and like you said it it, it ties in the sci-fi universe with the real universe because we have already seen the infinity war trailer he's on the ship with them thor's heading towards earth so that's going to be how they meet so thank you mm -hmm. thor for meeting each other <laughs> um another cool thing i saw it was like thor in order for thor to basically overcome evil he had to lose everything and i i didn't think about that until i read it because he lost his hair he lost his hammer he lost his eye he lost fucking asgard he lost asgard and like that he lost all that to realize what it took to kind of be a leader when he saved all those people and stuff and just he's a different thor now from this experience and it'll be really interesting to see how that uh, plays out in the Avengers and any any other future appearance he does. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting point. And another thing that I didn't really think about up until uh, you just brought this up, this is like I think probably the first uh, first Marvel movie where instead of like saving the world from some cataclysmic event, they actually they actually want it to happen, which I thought was a very interesting concept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they kind of ran away when you think about it. <laughs> Yeah, they did, yeah. <laughs> They're like, summon someone else to fight her, and let's just get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's somebody else's problem now. We did it, guys. We ran away. 
Star Revolution, man. Oh, <laughs> funniest part of that movie, and it's only funny because I live out here in Oklahoma, Texas. But the scene with the where that guy shows off the guns. Oh he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I got this from a world called Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that movie. I saw that scene in a Texas movie theater, and it was packed, and everyone just cracked up. They're like, ah, "Yeah, guns!" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that was a good scene. Uh, so good. what am I on? I'm on number three, right? Number three. Okay. So, despite being a piece of shit, Baby Driver is a really good movie. <laughs> I've actually, I, I haven't seen it yet. I, I still want to see it, and now I want to see it more since it's on your list. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, take for granted that Kevin Spacey's in it and all the shit that came out of it, and that's a conversation for another time. You can't let that shit affect a movie from being good or not. And I really like Baby yeah. Driver, just based on the direction alone. Edgar Wright is one of my favorite directors. Uh, music in it is awesome. The driving is awesome some leaps in logic and plot holes. I well, mean, not plot holes, just leaps in logic. Like, why the fuck would this shit happen? But regardless, it's still an entertaining movie. And I love it. And I thought it was great. I, I, I'll just leave it at that, man. Baby Driver. Drive, baby. Yeah, sometimes that's all we need in a movie. We just need entertainment. We don't really need to be, you know, bogged down by logic or, you know, escapism is nice once in a while. See, like, that that's what I think of the Transformers movies. They're good popcorn movies. Like, I can just sit there, space out, eat food, and just be like, okay, I was entertained. But it's never going to be one of my favorite movies that I'll think about again. That's what Baby right, Driver yeah. is. Where it's just like, it was entertaining. I liked it. Only difference being, I still think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better than... Yeah, it's a, it's a good popcorn movie. Good, good. All right, how about you for number two? All right, an even better movie, I think, would have to be War for the Planet of the Apes. God, that that was so close to making my list. <laughs> oh man, that is literally yeah. number six for me, man. <laughs> ah, really? Oh yeah. wow, yeah, man. What 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 to say about this movie? This is, I think, one of the best, if not the best, ending to a trilogy I've ever seen in my life. Uh. Yeah, as a whole, I think the Planet of the Apes trilogy is very strong because we get we get a complete story of a character's evolution. I mean, the the series it literally starts with Caesar's birth and spoiler alert ends with his death. And um honestly, like the way that this movie ended, uh it can very easily lead up to the events of the original uh Planet of the Apes movies given enough time in the timeline. Um, my brother actually filled me in on that because I had never. My only exposure to Planet of the Apes, mind you, is just this trilogy. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never seen the old Planet of the Apes movies. I've never seen the Mark Wahlberg, Tim Burton ones from 2000. Uh, you, you don't want to see that one. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's that's what I was gonna say. So this is my only exposure. My brother, however, said that the ending to this movie is actually a direct uh, tie-in to the Mark Wahlberg one. Because I guess wherever so Mark, they're heading or going is where Mark Wahlberg is in that uh, that movie. I, I can't. I don't really know what, what it's about or something. Oh no! Yeah, is, are they really tying this into that shitty one? I, that, that's what my brother said, but I you know take that with a grain of salt because I feel like those movies are also kind of like we don't talk about those movies. Oh man! <laughs> uh, so th the way that I interpreted it was. Um, you know, like how they they ended up going into that uh like the desert or whatever, and the uh the original movies, the Earth pretty much is like a huge freaking desert, or at least like where the apes are living and stuff. Uh, they, they sort of like live on the uh like the fringes of the desert, kind of like in this like jungly area, not quite desert but almost. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like in in the original movies, humans are just completely dumb; they can't talk or anything. And I think this movie gave a perfect explanation for how people ended it up that way just it, it set up so many things that lead that could lead perfectly to the original movies if you know enough time passes by and um yeah these the special effects were great the uh the fight scenes were phenomenal andy circus's performance is just simply outstanding um yeah overall great movie 
fantastic movie. I, one thing I really want to play, and I hope you get around to playing it more than anyone, Mike, is that uh, that Planet of the Apes Frontier game. Oh, shit. Is that out now? Yeah, yeah. It, it came out already, dude. Oh, fuck. Where's that? Wow. Yeah, it was like, it's a $20 game. It's It plays exactly like a, think like the Telltale games where you're basically just doing dialogue options, but okay. minus the walking. So you're basically just watching this movie, but creating your own story. It, uh, I can dig it. Like, PlayStation has introduced this thing, the PlayLink, where basically you can link up with your phone to play games. So mm. if you're watching that movie with, like, a group of four or five people, you can all link up your phones, and then there'll be a dialogue option, and then you all kind of put it to a vote where you'll be like, I think he should say this. And the one with the highest vote will be like, all right, I guess he's going to say this. And it goes like that. So that's definitely that's definitely a good game. It's a solid, like I said, $20 movie to experience pretty much. So, something to check out for you. That's cool. I'll I'll keep my eyes out for that. I'll let you know when it's on sale. Whoop whoop. Uh, moving on to my number two. Number dose. And I think this movie was really good and super under fucking rated, man. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh my god! I I've, god, I've been so meaning good. to see that movie longest time ah that movie fucking bombed and it's like it blew up that universe like there could have there could be more blade runner movies and it seems weird because it's just like oh that was so good in the 80s why can't they just leave it there and it's like because it's such a rich universe they need to expand on it and the fact that it does yeah. like, far fling in the future like all right literally 40 50 years have gone by here's where we're at now and it does it in such a unique way Story's awesome. Ryan Gosling's cool. Harrison Ford is still a badass. And as far like I love sci-fi, and I'm not big on Star Wars, so I look to shit like this, where it's like AI, <laughs> where it's AI and things have gone bad. Plus that whole Neo Tokyo, that's like my shit for a setting. If I could play a game in Neo Tokyo, I would lose it. That's why I love Persona. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. <yeah. laughs> Uh, but yeah, I love that movie a lot, man. It has a great story. It's it's long. It's a little long in the tooth. It's like nearing three hours, I want to say. It's like two hours and 40. Oh, wow. Uh, but shit, I drove like to the Alamo Draft House to see it, so that was like an hour 40 drive just to see this movie in a theater I like. Because I'm like, I wanted that experience, and I it was worth it. Wow. Yeah, sadly, I, I missed out. I don't know like how the hell that happened, but it, it just... I, I didn't end up seeing it. Oh, fuck, um, it on DVD? Because now I'm going to look up if I could just, like, buy it and watch it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, have, have you seen the original Blade Runner? Yeah. And that, that's what kind of pissed me off is I used to have the uh, director's cut DVD. Essentially the one that people say, oh, you, if you're going to watch it, you got to see this cut. But I think mm -hmm. it came with all three, all three cuts in it. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, crazy. I did, uh, I did see the original Blade Runner, and I thought it was mm -hmm. fine. I like this one so much more. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so without spoiling anything, uh, <laughs> does this movie answer any lingering questions that viewers might have had from the first one? It depends what your lingering questions are. I see. I see. Yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it. It's okay. see it when you can for sure. Red box that shit. Just pay two fifty, watch it, and then just be like, good. It was good. Very I, good. I think I will red box that shit. Let me see if it's out. Uh, so that that's the silvers. On to the golds, the number ones. All right. So unfortunately, since well, your your comment in 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 your number two, I'm not sure if you'll you'll like my number one, but. Here it is, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I loved it. It's in my honorable mentions. I'll say that right now. So I'm not gonna, oh, I'm not gonna say it was bad or anything. I liked it a lot. I really did. Good. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm glad you saw it. Um, yeah. Like, uh, for for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, this, this movie is very divisive among certain fans for. Kind of reasonable reasons, I guess. I, I, Mike, I personally I'm, think... I'm going to cut you off right here, okay? Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, just know that we're about to spoil the fuck out of 
Star Wars because we haven't talked about Star Wars because we haven't talked because we haven't recorded in forever. So <laughs> if you're listening, thank you for listening. And hopefully you've seen Star Wars. Let's get into spoilers, man. Just fucking go out. What did you this? think of this? What did you think? Because I know that a lot of people are split on it. I mean, honestly, like, I... I, I loved it, man. Like, at first, like, yeah, I was kind of uh, dis- uh, a little disappointed that we didn't learn anything about Snoke, but that scene when he just got fucking smoked, when Snoke got smoked, that was just fucking crazy, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kylo Ren and Rey are just, like, fighting back-to-back, just mowing down those guards that never did shit before, but now all of a sudden they're badass. Like, that was cool. That was fucking awesome. And you saw a bunch of different uh, weapons, too. Like, all those red yeah. guards had, like, some cool-ass, like, whips and shit. Yeah, that that was really cool, and like they were able to like handle like lightsabers. So they're like, holy shit, these guys are pretty strong. But yeah, just seeing like the the freaking bad guy and like the, the 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 hero character just join forces in that one scene was just really cool. And I'm like, wait, a minute, so is, is he gonna turn already? But then that scene when he when uh when he he sees that the throne is open, just for the taking, and just goes for it. I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna be the big bad guy for the next movie. I thought that was. Just a really great way of, of setting him up to be the big bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other spo- oh, yeah. So then the the other big thing, the fact that uh, I, I know uh, Jay Abrams is kind of like, oh, Ray Ray's parent. Like he kept kind of like teasing this about the the movie. Like, oh, you, you never hear Ray's last name. We don't know where her parents are. He, he does that fucking thing where he likes to have a, a mystery box, which I, I kind of get like a little annoyed by. So here's, he, 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 here's the thing with that. J.J. Abrams directed the first one, and he set up all these questions for the universe, and it's similar to what he did with the show Lost, where in his mind he had all these mysteries and things, and then mm-hmm. once he left, he's like, he left it to the writers. He's like, I'm going to let you solve this mystery. I'm going to let you decide where this goes. And then so he had all these things, and he gave it to Rain Johnson, and he's just like, you direct it. You you tell me where this goes. And Rain Johnson just like cracked his knuckles and he's like, "All right, Snoke's out. Ray's nobody. Fuck Luke. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> and now J.J. Abrams is coming back for the third one. He's like, "You motherfucker! I had a whole fucking timeline and now I gotta fucking rewrite everything. You ruined my story." But he's um, like, fuck. <laughs> so. But, but yeah, so I'm I'm a little annoyed that J.J. Abrams always kind of like sets up these mysteries and then they they never end up getting resolved. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, I I love the message that uh I, I love the fact that Ray's parents aren't really anybody uh uh like famous or whatever. It, I think that that shows that you know anybody could potentially be a hero. It, it doesn't necessarily come down to bloodline. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great movie that resonates right up to the very end. Um, with that, that little boy, you know, he's sweeping up with his broom. He, he, he catches it using the force. He, he forces it into his hand yeah. and then just holds it up like a lightsaber. I, I just think that's such a, a great message. I, I think, especially for kids to hear nowadays with, you know, fucking Trump in charge and shit. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense now because people, before the movie came out, they had announced that Rain Johnson would helm the next Star Wars trilogy. Mm. And, like this trilogy is not even over yet. The second movie wasn't even out, and Disney's already talking about the next trilogy. People are like, "Oh, why the fuck is he like? This movie must be fucking great if he's doing it." And it's because of that. Like, he put that message out there that there's a, it's a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. It's not just Luke. It's not just these characters. And yeah, Han died, and you know, unfortunately, Princess Leia, the actress herself, uh, died. So she's definitely not going to be in the third one. I feel like. Yeah. So, my brother put it this way, where it's just like, they're clearing out the old stuff, like the 80s stuff, because that generation now has to get over it, and now it's yeah. the people that were stuck with the prequels, and we're like, we want good Star Wars, and it's like, this is our <laughs> good Star Wars. Yeah. So, so we're moving into stories away from Luke, because we don't need Luke, we just need a story that involves good and bad in this universe and that's all yeah that's all that's all we need in a star wars it doesn't have to be luke it doesn't have to be princess leia we we just need a war in the stars that's that's all we want Mm -hmm. (laughs) now uh, what's your stance on uh i forgot her name the asian uh actress person in the movie what did you think oh rose yeah rose i liked her as a character uh 
I feel like uh, that casino scene ran maybe a little bit too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, felt a little prequel D kind of. Uh, That's uh, a perfect word. It felt prequel D because it's so true. Pre- it's like something about it was just like, <laughs> mm, I don't know, this architecture is reminding me of like, <laughs> hey, Danny boy. The... <laughs> yeah. You like, in the, the pod race. <laughs> <laughs> oh Full of fucking camel and milk it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, the the, the casino like it, it felt prequely. Like you, you saw all these like wacky looking fucking small crazy looking aliens that just totally look bizarre and like but, like the actual like place itself looked like freaking it looked like somewhere on Earth like Vegas or something. Like it didn't really look like anywhere interesting from like a galaxy far far away. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just how long did that that scene go on for like 40 minutes or something when they're trying to find the code breaker guy and yeah end up with Benicio Speaking, del Toro instead let's let's move on to the the code breaker guy I didn't uh, I didn't much care for his character and that's one of those things where it's like motherfucker you better be important in the third one because he was there he helped them and then he turned on them and then they were pissed they're like wow did you you know you just sided with the wrong people and he's like maybe and then he walks away and he was just the way he had like that nervous tick or like he was like stutter the way he talked yeah and i'm like all right it's interesting but why <laughs> yeah I, I i found that nervous tick thing very annoying i, I just didn't with anything yeah i was like what what is he getting at here i don't understand but um yeah i mean i i'm, I'm a little divided on him on, on on the one hand like i said like his nervous tick was freaking annoying as shit but on the other hand i liked how he sort of um he he brought into uh he brought he brought this sort of like gray uh he, he brought this sort of gray aspect to the story yeah where we're, we're so Every, everyone used... everyone saw the gray and that was his introduction for finn and rose to the gray is them saying like yeah these fuckers make weapons and shit but they do it for both sides you do realize that yeah, and I thought it was cool to to hear that in a Star Wars movie. But on the other, on the other hand, though, I'm kind of like, well, these these whole movies they're they're based on, like the, the the whole the whole conflict in in these movies is between you know the the dark and the light, <laughs> um, and I, I feel like they just sort of like just brought that up just to brought that just to bring it up, not to really like point out anything sort of uh, relevatory or anything. And then, uh, st- sticking with Finn's storyline, uh, Captain Phasma. Once again, great character, super cool, garbage. Just like, <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck? Don't give her some badass armor that can deflect these damn beams and just die. <laughs> uh, uh, like, we, technically, we didn't, we didn't technically see her die though. Like, I, I know, like, it, it's very highly unlikely that she could live through that. But I mean, in Force Awakens, didn't they send her into like a trash compactor or something? Yeah. So, I mean, if, if she comes she, back a third time and like dies in two minutes, it, it'll just be an ongoing joke. <laughs> she'll, she'll be the uh, the Kenny of uh, of the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, you killed Phasma! <laughs> she'll be back in the next movie. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, and Chingy warned me of this. He saw it before me. He's like, when you get done seeing this movie, text me your favorite uh, scene. Because I know for a fact it's going to be this one specific shot. Because we're both like into cinematography and just having like that perfect shot in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second that ship turned around, went light speed right into the Star Destroyer. Oh and, my like, god. The theater went silent and it was just like this black and white like... <laughs> it was just such a fuck... Like goosebumps thinking about it. And like the audible gasp that I heard is something that won't i don't think will be replicated in a theater for a while because you don't have yeah. moments like that in movies Th- that was just a, a beautiful sight to see it was like it was just black and white slow motion no sound whatsoever it it, it, it was yeah it, it it really emphasized like the the importance of of uh holdo's mission like what she was doing like you, you could really feel the gravity of that decision and I think it, it was really cool seeing friggin' kamikaze uh, <laughs> fucking, like, spaceships. Like, we've never really seen that in a Star Wars movie before. And I think that's what this movie does uh, very well. It, it's it's totally unpredictable. When it's going left, you think it's going to go right. Mm-hmm. 
there's a lot of scenes that there's bound to be parallel it's star wars they they got to play it safe but they got to take risks and that's what has people so divided is people gave force awaken shit because it was too much like a new hope they gave this one shit because it has elements of empire strikes back and the parts that aren't empire strikes back are totally new and different and they're like what the fuck why would you do that so here i want to fall in the last question for this uh luke's death i said it what is (laughs) (laughs) uh did he have to die you think like do you think that for these movies to go on luke would have to die eventually um all right so here here's my stance on it first first of all i just want to say that that scene when uh luke fucking astro projected himself across the universe just to fight kylo ren i thought that was really cool mm-hmm. and uh it, it was like a nice little throwback to when he said oh do you think i'm just gonna take on the first order with a laser sword <laughs> and then he did in a sense I, I thought that was really cool but um yeah getting to your question um uh i don't think he's gonna be gone for good i think he i think he will be back in episode nine as like a force ghost or something and, and to that extent, I feel like Force Ghosts are just there for, like, a single scene of kind of wisdom. You know, like, if he does show up, it'll be a cameo to just kind of be like, don't give up. I didn't give up. You know, and then he'll be gone again. But, yeah, I do see him yeah. coming back, but like you said, as a Force Ghost. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, like, just being a Force Ghost and, and just being there for those key moments, I think that is going to be... I think that kind of is necessary in a sense to uh, sort of move on with the uh, the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't I don't mean to quote uh, Kylo Ren, but uh, yeah, I think in some sense that Star, uh, Star Wars does need to sort of leave the past behind in a, in a, a little bit and sort of try to find its its footing for like a, a new generation. And I think and, that, uh, that theme alone was. Not even, I wouldn't say ham-fisted, but it was very obvious that it was like a fuck you to the fans. We're just like, fucking destroy your past. Get rid of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, Kylo Ren might as well have just been looking into the camera and staring at the audience. <laughs> just yeah. saying, like, get over it. Let everything die. This is new. Yeah, that's that a very meta message. Um, and I'm glad they stuck with it. Cause, yeah. Because he could have, Luke Skywalker could have very well snapped out of it gotten up, dusted himself off, and be like, well, back to bed. And instead they know. They faded him out. They gave him that amazing send-off where it was like the same shot of him looking up at the two suns. Yeah. So I'm like, yes. again, back to cinematography. Like, that's one of those scenes that I'll, that'll stick with me be, just because, like, I just remember seeing it in a theater with people. I'm just being like, wow. Like, I didn't experience Star Wars in the 70s, and now I'm experiencing <laughs> it now for, like, I don't know. It's very, movies have an effect, and Star Wars will always be a part of pop culture and stuff and i say that i'm not a big star wars geek but it, i like star wars and that's that's a scene i like a lot uh i'm gonna move over to my number one all right let's hear it <laughs> so like i said war for the planet of the apes is my number six mm-hmm. so if you want to take my list and just kind of bump everything up like blade runners number one baby drivers number two and so on because <laughs> my number one movie <laughs> is a nine-hour movie called Dark on Netflix. (laughs) And it's not a movie, it's a TV show, and it's a really fucking good one at that. (laughs) God damn it, I love this show, man. Wow. Discovered it, what, like maybe uh, the day after Christmas, uh, like uh, the week of Christmas, and I've already watched this series, like all ten episodes, uh, one and seven episodes. And I'm going to restart it again, but I'm going to take notes because that's what my brother's doing. My brother's also re-watching it again. Uh, Chingy just finished watching it. I've Anytime there's a Facebook post that was like, oh, what was your favorite movies or TV shows of the year? Top five. My top five would be Dark, 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 Dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wow. Man. It is really good then. Dude, I cannot explain to you the amount of intellect that went into this show like thoughts and more prayers. so than rick morty <laughs> yeah. you you legit need a high iq to watch this show man like following <laughs> some of these threads is tough um so let me break it down for you because you probably haven't even heard me talk about this show other than you saying watch it 
So Dark is a German show. So German, oh yeah. So feel free to watch it with subtitles, but Auf I feel like German is such a <laughs> harsh language. So good. Like there's <laughs> there's a scene where this woman is talking to her daughter, but it sounds like she's yelling at her. She's like, "I love you. You're a really good daughter." And it's like, "Nah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Yeah. He's my daughter. So I went ahead and watched the show with the English dubs. Mm-hmm. Aside from the dubs and the lips not syncing, it's still very well uh, acted, the English mm-hmm. voiceovers. So no harm in watching it like that. That's how I watched it both times. Um, basically, there's this kid. His dad killed himself a few months ago, and he's just getting back into school. But here's the thing. When the dad killed himself, he left a note, and it said... Do not open until November 10th at 10.49 p.m. And the lady who has that note just waited patiently until that day and opened the note and read it at that time. And it's this whole shit where this little kid goes missing. And now they're trying to find the missing kid. And, well, it's a, it's a string of missing kids in this small town. Oh, uh, shit. A lot like Twin Peaks where it's just like everyone knows everybody. Everyone's in each other's business. Like everyone's connected somehow like oh you're cheating on him with this guy's wife and you work at the power plant with this guy's husband who's also the manager at this store that you shop at with these kids who yeah everyone's connected which is why i say like if you watch the show like you kind of have to remember the german like it's easier to remember like english names like oh yeah ben is related to this person but with german names it's like mikkel is related to heidenreich who's (laughs) Who's <laughs> so that's the only reason it was kind Brother of hard Hans. to follow. That's the only reason it's hard to follow. It's just because the names are kind of hard. Yeah, but no, nah, yeah. I'm down. Like, I, it'll, it'll be cool to re- refresh on my German. So, mm-hmm. yeah, this show is just wonderful, man. So it turns out that like these kids that are going missing now, it all happened 33 years ago. Like the same exact string of missing kids. Oh shit! And then you realize that. This nuclear power plant is, that's about to go under business is, like, doing some weird shady shit because there are these caves just around back that uh-huh. lead to wormholes to different eras. What? Yeah, so these kids are, like, they go into the wormhole and suddenly they're in the fucking 80s and then the music is just, like, German 80s pop and I'm like, oh, this is fucking wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> is uh is uh David Hasselhoff in, the, in there, too? No, he's not. But the, the band Germans, that plays 99 Luft Balloons is in here. The Germans love them that hassle, huh? But I'll, I'll take 99 Luft Balloons instead. 99 Luft Balloons. But anyways, I can't, I can't uh, explain enough how much people should go out there and fucking watch Dark, because it is a badass show, and I love the fuck out of it. Sounds very intriguing. For sure. So, uh, honorable mentions, you want to spit out your few if you have any? Honorable mentions. Well, yeah, uh, that since I now know that both John Wick and Logan came out in 2017, <laughs> uh, those those are definitely definitely my honorable mentions. Uh, both of those movies had fantastic uh, cinematography for you know fight scenes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think more so with Logan too because like he he's you know fuck he's he's dying in that movie. Yeah. So like he's fighting like, like a dying man, which is really interesting to see, but. And yeah, and then just seeing Keanu Reeves pull off all those moves at age 50-whatever is just mind-blowing. Very good movies. Uh, for me, like I said, War of the Planet of the Apes is in there. Star Wars uh, is in there. Uh, right at the start of January, man, Get Out. Remember that? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. That, I totally forgot about that one, too. Yeah, that was, that was January of last year. That was a fucking awesome movie. Uh it was Still nominated has... for musical comedy at the Glo- Golden Globes. Comedy? Yeah, it was under the category for best picture for musical or comedy. It was Get Out, and then like The Greatest Showman and all these other shit. But no, <laughs> but people are like, why the fuck is Get Out in here? <laughs> yeah, that seems like a. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but it certainly like... doesn't look like a comedy. I feel like the old white people who like did the ballots were just like, who directed it? That guy from Mad TV and Key and Peel, so it's a comedy, right? And it's like, <laughs> well, I mean, there's like a joke or two. Put it in the comedy musical category. <laughs> it's like, do you see it? Nah, I'm all set. It's not gonna win. It's like you assholes. 
Oh, white people. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Marvel movies, uh, also, don't forget, Spider-Man came out this year. Yeah, that, that was, uh, yeah, th throw that in my honorable mentions, too. Yeah, I just, uh, I just put <laughs> Marvel movies, because there's so fucking many. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, say what you will, I liked it, fuck it, it's, it's in there, I liked it a that's lot. That's <laughs> And I just rented it, so I saw it this year, but came out last year, Atomic Blonde, another fucking cool action movie. From the director of John Wick, so really, yeah, get on that, Mike. <laughs> wow, I, I I knew it was like similar to John. I didn't know it was the same director though. Interesting fact, though, because I looked it up. The director uh, originally got his break because he's a stunt coordinator. He was the stunt coordinator for The Matrix, and that's why he's so good with like these action scenes because he's been oh, doing shit. it for like decades on now. So yeah, well, that's probably. That's probably how he got hooked up with Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, definitely how. And now he's doing Deadpool 2, so that should be fucking what? cool. Yeah. This, guy, oh my this God. guy's making a name for himself, man. <laughs> More Gun Fu! Love Gun Fu. Uh, we're still within that two-hour mark, or I guess one hour, depending if this uploads separately, which I think it will. Uh, let's knock out our disappointments and predictions. I feel like this will be pretty short and brief, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so let's just go, let's go with all of yours, but you said you have two, right? Oh, uh, disappointments? Yeah, yeah. uh, so my, my, uh, I guess, yeah, we'll just go with one. So my, my main disappointment for 2017, it, it's, it's a video game disappointment, mm -hmm. Mafia 3. Uh, I knew that the, the, the first two games, like, they were, they were, uh, they were okay, like, they weren't necessarily, like, great or anything. But um, just everything that like I had seen leading up to the release of Mafia Three, like it just looked like a really cool, very story-driven game. Uh, so I was all for it. I pick it up, and it's just like the most fucking broken game I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, <laughs> uh, the graphics were just inconsistent. Like one minute, uh, your character Lincoln Clay, like he he would like look very like polished and you know up to date graphically. And the, and then the next, like he would look blurry as shit, and like he would look almost like a PS2 friggin' like polygonal character. I'm like, all right, what's going on here? Damn, uh, I'd be driving my car around. One minute the sky would be nice and clear, the next it would be fucking greenish. The fucking Hulk. I'm like, wait, wait, what? D didn't didn't friggin' Zelda Ocarina of Time have like a perfect blue sky in 1990 whatever? Like, why is it hard for them to do what Nintendo did, like, 20 years ago? And, um... Nintendo does what, what PlayStation don't. <laughs> oh! But, um... <laughs> yeah, so... Graphically, it was very weird, and... Just gameplay was... It was just completely shallow. Uh, very, very, very repetitive missions, um... Go here, kill this guy. Go here, kill that guy. Um, bang out this racket. Like there, there weren't real, like it had this open world, but no real uh, cool side objectives to accomplish. So it, it it felt pointless, really. Like why give me this huge space to explore if I can't do anything in it? Hmm. So that that was just a huge disappointment because the story itself actually was really really good and engaging, but everything else just sucked. That's that's a game I'm gonna play regardless. Uh, definitely pick it up on sale. But for people who paid sixty dollars for that to be that disappointed in it, kind of kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for my disappointments, again, 2017 was a stellar year, so it was kind of hard for me to come up with five disappointments. So I'm just gonna kind of rattle off the weird ones that I did. Uh, number five. Valkyra Revolution. It's not a good game. <laughs> Wait, is that that uh like World War Two Japanese Sega thing? Uh, sort of. So there's Valkyra Chronicles on PS3, which is fucking awesome. Great game, love it. It got an HD remaster on PS4. Uh, two and three came out, or I'm sorry, two came out on PSP, and three came out on PSP only in Japan. So those games are kind of locked away to, like, it's hard to play them on console unless you just have the first one. Um, mm. 
Then came Valkyria Revolution, 40 bucks, and I knew it would be different because it's a different character, different mechanics even. Uh, mm-hmm. so just, the only thing that really carried over was the art style. But it's just not a good game. It plays really clunky. I didn't uh, even get around to finishing it, so it, it got buried in there because it was around the time. I think I got it just before we went to E3. So I didn't spend too much time with it, and I really don't have any motivation to go back to it. So that kind of sucked. That's but a shame. There's we got we're getting Valkyria Chronicles four here in North America on PS4, and whole new game. So that's something to look forward to. This was just kind of like the redheaded stepchild to kind of hold us off until then, I guess. Hmm. Uh, number four, I put VR. This whole list isn't really like. It's like a parent saying, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what this is. Like, VR is great. I love it. It's just such a hassle to set up. And I knew that going in, that mm. it would just be like, it's entry-level VR. It's just a lot of cables to plug in. Like, if I'm going to play VR, I have to, like, set aside 15 minutes to get everything out of my closet, plug it in, set it up, make sure everything's updated, my everything's looking good, and it's like, cool. <laughs> now let's play a game. <laughs> Uh, when we were in E3, I think the only games that you had were um were Batman and uh and um Res um yeah Res Infinite Res Infinite yeah has, has your um has your library like increased substantially since then or just that very... it has and that's thanks to the fact that Sony's still getting behind VR. Which is why it's on this oh. list. Like, it's, there's room for improvement. The fact that it has 2 million sales and they're still supporting it is awesome because now there's a free VR game uh, every month with PS Plus. So, oh, that's cool. I have Rigs, I have Rush of Blood. Uh, I forgot what the free game was for this month. And on top of that, I've also picked up Accounting Plus from Justin Roiland of Rick and Morty. <laughs> so I also stockpiled on some garbage VR games for kind of like streaming later, so... There's potential here. I'm going to fuck around with it more this year, but it was very light in terms of what I played last year. But now that I'm investing more and trying out new things, I'm sure I'll find like hidden gems and stuff out there of things that are worth playing. Okay, that's that's cool. uh, Justice League. Again, I liked it. I thought it was fine. But compared to Marvel and everything they're doing, it's still a rushed product. It's directed by two different people. It has some flaws, but it was enjoyable. Yeah, I, I felt the same way about it. Um, it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It was just, it, it, it was fine, like you said. It was um, a popcorn movie. Like, you walk out and you're like, that was good. No, that, but that's all it is. It's just good. Definitely definitely better than friggin' uh, uh Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, number two, and this one actually kind of does suck. Agents of Mayhem. Oh, no, really? Yeah, man, we played it at E3, and it was just like, we were blinded by the experience. <laughs> we were bonding with their friggin' dudes, too. And... Yeah, they gave us free shit. And <laughs> we're like, yeah, man, we love your game. Blinded by that free shit. But yeah, then the game came out, and it's like, it's perfectly suited for multiplayer. You have three agents that you get to play as at a time and you're in this open world where everything's destructible you're doing missions and finding shit and it would be cool if you can get in there with three friends and all fuck around in this world but it's not it's a single player game and it's just kind of like well that's weird and the missions are repetitive really repetitive and it's uh, just like, okay so i just kind of like leveled up the character got him to max level i'm like all right cool moved over to the other character max leveled him did another character now after like five characters i'm like this isn't fun. Like, why? Yeah, I'm just like, going through the motions where I'm like, I paid for this. I was excited for this. I'm just, I gotta learn to like it. And I just stopped. I'm like, I'm not gonna like this. Yeah, I could never really get behind those like friggin' uh, games like that where it's like your your goal is to just like level up as you know much as you can or like get as much loot because at at a certain point it's just gonna become pointless. Mm-hmm. And like, once you it, find the characters that you like and you're good with, it's kind of like what's the point of switching to other characters? Like, if yeah. I, I have my characters that I like, and they're super strong, because I'm like, oh, this guy's fast. He has low health, but he's fast, and he has a really cool special ability. I could switch over to this guy. He has a beefy health bar. He does a shield and, like, a shotgun thing. And this person can boost all my other characters. Sweet. 
But once I max leveled those three, I was like, well, if I'm going to keep doing all these missions, the XP's got to go towards some other characters, so I might as well use everyone else. And it's just, once you have those characters, it's like, well, well shit, everyone else kind of sucks in comparison. Yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. a bummer, man. It, it could have been a good game, and it, it sucks that it's only a mediocre game. And the number one disappointment, and I'm sure that it's a disappointment for everyone, loot boxes. <laughs> yes! Oh my god, yes. God, Battlefield suffered from it, Call of Duty suffered from it, fucking everyone suffered from it. Fucking Star Wars? <laughs> Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah. And so, oh my god. they need to Most... get their shit together. Destiny. <laughs> yeah. Still rattling off names. Uh, yeah, it became a really gross gross tactic for getting games out this year so fix your shitty a because if anthem is gonna be anything like destiny they need to cut back on loot because it didn't work for battle battlefront yeah didn't uh ea have like the most downvoted uh uh comment on reddit history or something yep they they (laughs) can have that award (laughs) Right up to their game of the year with Mass Effect 2. And it's like, you guys are a good company if you choose to be. But then the greed kicks in and your games turn to shit. They're the evil empire. Exactly. Uh, uh, so those are my disappointments. Like I said, I just kind of came up with a few there. Do you have five predictions? Five predictions? Um, I'm not really... <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not sure if I have five. Um, if you got it, I'll, I'll go first with mine if you want. Yeah, sure, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, number five, again, I tried to throw in some movie stuff, that way it wasn't just all games, because we are a movie and video game podcast, and if you're listening two hours in, or part two, an hour and seven minutes in, thank you. (laughs) Um, so here are my predictions, just kind of some random things. Disney bought Marvel, or Disney bought, uh, Fox, so now they have all the X-Men stuff in there. Along with everything else in the universe? Yeah. I I don't (laughs) think we're gonna see X-Men until... Next year with Avengers 4. Supposedly, Kevin Feige says that the great thing about Infinity War is that it's going to give us something we've never seen before, and that's finality, like a conclusion. And just like the comics always reboot, like, the universe through some weird cosmic event, like the new Mm -hmm. 52 or whatever. Or just because the writer feels like it. (laughs) Or because the writer feels like it. Um, I think that's what Infinity War is going to be. A lot of these actors' contracts are running up. Uh, Thor's is up, Captain America's is up, so these mantles are going to have to be passed on to other teams of people. So, whatever happens with Infinity War, where it, like, resets the universe, or, like, a lot of, you know, superheroes die, but then are brought back to life, and as someone else or something else, that's when I think they'll introduce X-Men, or at the very least a bunch of other side characters that, you know, we didn't even know Fox fucking owned. (laughs) That yeah, that that would be cool. Yeah, it would. I think that that would be a great way to sort of um, not have the universe feel so cluttered up with. Oh, we've got the uh, we got the Avengers, we got the X Men, we got the fucking pizza guy. You know, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> they could uh, they could really focus in uh, their their universe and not feel so overcrowded that way. And this was different from when they bought Sony, uh, when they bought Spider Man from Sony, whereas Spider Man is actually a crucial character in the avengers storyline that yeah. had like shoehorning him into civil war was something they tried to do quick and with good reason he had a little cameo little fight scene and that was all we got of him until his movie homecoming and it's just like there's no rush to throw x-men into the avengers so sit on it do something with it and then introduce them at the end of avengers 4 post credit scene where you see like mutants and shit all over the place uh number four i think we get a release date on kingdom hearts dude i hope so i fucking hope so it's like we don't hear as much of it as we think we do but there's a lot of stuff coming out of japan with like that monsters inc world getting revealed and oh really yeah there's a monsters inc i think it leaked i don't think it was revealed but yeah the fact that that's out there i feel like that game's further along than we think and Square Enix is going to try to do the same thing they did with Kingdom Hearts, uh, sorry, Final Fantasy 15, where they're like, by the way, here's the release date, and they change it. But at the very least, it's soon. So mm. this game has been way too long in development. they got to give us a date, or they need to get off the pot. Uh, so. 
Bloodborne 2, I think that's a given. We got a tease of some sort of game at the Game Awards from From Software. Halo this year and Borderlands 3. I think those are those are my reveals. Borderlands 3, not this year, but at the very least shown this year. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I kind of just came up with some games that I could probably hope or wish to see with some dates. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's definitely a lot more foresight than I have. <laughs> What do you do? You got anything? Uh, mine are sort of more so hopeful than I guess predictions, but no, uh, fine. what do you got? And I, I guess this sort of um, this is before I, I heard uh, Wayne's question from the the previous recording, but uh, I I definitely hope to hear a definitive answer on friggin' Virtual Console for Switch. Um, I mean, yeah, like Nintendo, they've just been too uh, wishy washy on the subject for you know since the Switch has been released. And you know, I just want to hear a clear yes or no. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they said that their subscription service would roll out in 2018. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that we learn more about that soon. Uh, if we find out like if we're going to be getting a free game of the month and like what that will be, since they also have that weird arcade select thing going on now, too. Um so yeah, that's that's for my Nintendo stuff. Uh, another thing that I have is Monster Hunter Four looks really fun, or World rather. Mm-hmm. Monster Hunter World looks looks really fun. Um, I don't know; those games aren't like usually my bag, but like just seeing like gameplay for it, and like I know that like some of my friends are gonna be picking it up. Like I've never really like played a, a whole lot of like multiplayer like co-op games before. Because, you know, like, most of them are, like, shooters and stuff, and that's not, you know, I'm, I'm really not, like, a, into, like, Call of Duty and all that stuff. But, like, running around, like, killing monsters and, like, building up armor and shit with your friend, like, that sounds like a lot of fun. And It's definitely a game so, I'll, I'll try. I don't think it's my kind of game either, but something worth giving a shot, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to think what other predictions I might have. It doesn't got to be five. We can wrap this up if you want. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's been... Sorry, I just like, <laughs> leaned, I leaned real far away from the mic there. Uh, that's been the Wicked Pixelated Podcast, part two, or one. Depends if this uploads as a two-hour thing. I don't know. Uh, editing is hard. We'll see. So, <laughs> thank you, Mike, for recording with me again and sticking with me and still wanting to do this. And Absolutely. It's pleasure. my pleasure. Fucking awesome, man. Uh, thank you to Great and Zach and a bunch of other people who still listen and support this. And anytime I even mention Wicked Pixelated, maybe recording, they're like, yeah, do it. And then we never do. But then I'm like, we're going to do it. And they're like, yeah, do it. They don't lose hope. So thank you for not losing hope and, you know, still asking questions and stuff. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Motivation. You guys are the real MVPs. As Brandon would say, you are the homies. (laughs) So... Yeah, follow us. Uh, I'm at Wicked Pixelated on everything, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, somehow. Uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash Wicked Pixelated is where you want to be if you want to ask us questions for the show, even be on the show. Uh, so, if we can record. So you can, so you can tell us what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want. I want to, 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 I want to. And then the video got taken down to YouTube. <laughs> so you just sang five seconds of the song. You can't do that. Um, but yeah, so stick around. We will be back on a regular schedule, hopefully recording every week. We're going to be doing the news. We're going to bring back Trailer Talk Boys. We're going to have special guests on. And we're going to just fucking do our thing again, man. We're going to go to PAX East. We need to be legitimate. Fake it till we make it. Make more business cards. Peace out. Mm-hmm.